and I've read this a hundred times, but this is what I wanted to read to you this morning. It says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ, to all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, I, I saw something there, and it says, Let glory be to him in the church for all generations. And so that, that just goes and digs a little bit deeper into the first verse we read that says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or even think, 
according to the power that works in us to all generations. That means that exceedingly abundant power, more than I could ever ask or think, can work in my life according to the power that works in me through the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, because I belong to all generations. Amen? And so today, we can have God show up in our midst and do wonderful things. And I thought, man, you know, what is this according to this? How, how does He work in our lives? It's according to the power that works in us. Not some power of, of right thinking, not some power of, of you know, self-hope and, and things like this. And, and you know what I'm glad of? I'm glad we, that we've got a pastor that preaches the Word. We've got more than just a motivational speaker, right? <laughs> Amen. I'm glad that he'll stand for truth, that he preaches the Word. Nothing against motivational speaking. But, man, the power from the truth of God in operation in our life, when we line ourselves up with it, man, that is the power that God will release in our lives where he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or even think according to that truth being activated in our lives. Aren't you glad for Jesus today that he's alive and active in each and every one of our lives? Amen. Abel, we want to welcome you here to the tabernacle this morning. We thank you for coming out and being with us. If this is your first time, make yourself at home, and we welcome you and appreciate you being with us. Uh, today after church is food distribution, so if, uh, if you were involved with that after service, you can go around to the back of the church there, and they will uh, be doing the food distribution there. And next Sunday, we're going to be having a baptism on April 28th next Sunday. Man, I get excited about baptism. You know why? The reason I get excited about baptism is it means because we actually get to see a work, right, of, of in the natural of what Christ did for people in the supernatural, amen? It is evidence to us and an evidence of their faith that Christ is still our Savior, He's still our Redeemer, He's still our Healer, and that He's still getting involved in people's lives. So next Sunday we'll be able to celebrate what Jesus has done in the lives of people, amen? Tab Kids Info Card. If you haven't filled one of those out, if you got kids back in the Tab Connections and anything in Children's Church or, or anything like that, if you haven't filled out a card, see someone in the back today or Pastor Eric and um, we'll get you to fill that out for us. Um, I'm excited today. We talked about last week. We showed a video last week. But today we're starting a new ministry at the Tabernacle of Praise. It's called Explorer Church. And we have a new way of reaching our three to five-year-old toddlers with the life-changing power of the gospel. Amen. You should be excited about that because our children, three to five, are now being ministered to. You know, and, and I'll tell you this. Let me just take some liberty. I, I, go, I have the opportunity and the privilege to go to a lot of different churches and minister there some. And, and a lot of them are so focused on the adults, and that's great. But I'm happy to be in a multi-generational church. Because let me tell you, I, I love my daughter, and, and she can sit with me all day long if she wants to. But how many people know she's not on the level of Bishop's teaching? And so she's hard, to, she's hard. So, so now mommy and daddy are distracted and we're trying to take care of our little girl and, and we're trying to teach her. And so mommy and daddy's not getting as much either because we're just, and, and not that my daughter's a distraction to me, but I'm saying I'm glad that I come to a place where we are multi-generational and the focus is getting the word of God on a level that they can understand Amen. so that Christ can save them from a young age and raise them up. And he'll raise up prophets, apostles, pastors, missionaries, teachers to change this region and to take it to the world amen man we should be excited about that God just started a new thing here a new level of ministry here amen all right listen <clears throat> Mother's Day pictures if you're here and you've got uh, if you want to get pictures of you and your daughters or have something that you want uh, shown during uh, Mother's Day or something like that you need to get those pictures in um, to our first lady uh, Miss Renee um, by next Sunday is that correct by next Sunday um, so if you have any questions about that, see her. Also on Mother's Day, um, which is going to be May 12th, we're having a baby dedication. So uh, if you've had children or uh, maybe in the past year or two, or, or maybe you've got children you've never had an opportunity to dedicate them to the Lord, uh, we want to do that on, on May the 12th on Mother's Day. It's an awesome time. Uh, so if you want to get involved with that, also see our First Lady, uh, Renee Matthews, about that. All right. Go to our website, www.hurricanchurch.com. If you go there, you can also get involved with our online giving, and you can stay in touch with everything that's going on in the church. It's a great website. Check it out. Um, but are we ready to give today? 
Amen. You know what? I love giving here because I know my, my seed is always blessed because I'm sowing in good ground, right? See, the problem isn't the seed. The problem's the ground that we sow into, right? Jesus, when, when he said the sower goes out and sows the seed, he never said anything was wrong with the seed. He said the difference was in the soil that it was planted in. And we plant in good soil here. Jesus is saving our babies. He's saving our middle schoolers. He's saving our high schoolers. We're seeing adults and seniors be saved and lives changed for the power of Jesus. And I'm excited to come to a place like this, amen, where God is moving, God is alive. God is in operation in our lives, and I'm excited. Good ground to sow in, all right? All right, well, let's just thank God for our offering today. Father, we do love you and thank you. We thank you, God, for a place, Lord, where we can experience you no matter where we come from, Father, no matter what level we're on, no matter what our age is, no matter, Father, God, what's going on in our life, we thank you that this is a place where we do experience our faith. We thank you today, Father, Lord, that you're going to take this offering. You're going to take the tithe and the offering, Father, and you're going to bless your children, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we line ourselves up with the laws of giving and receiving. And we thank you we got a place, Lord, to support ministry. So, God, we do give you honor and thanks today, and we pray this in Jesus' name, and amen. You continue worshiping today, and God bless you in your giving. Is 
I believe he's in this room this morning. How many of y'all believe he's in this room this morning? How many believe he's in this room this morning? You know, the quickest way to get Jesus to leave is act like it's not a big deal when he's here. And I refuse to do that today. Probably because you are king of glory. You are king of kings, God. Lord, you are enthroned, God, above this earth, Lord. And Lord, your enemies, God, are your footstool today. Lord, we see you, God, coming, Lord. Lord, with fire in your eyes, Lord, with a love, God, and a desire, Lord, that never sleeps, God, for your people. And Lord, you're coming back for your church one day, Lord. And Lord, until this day, Lord, we believe, God, that there's power in your name today, Jesus. Lord, that there's a power, God, behind your name, Lord, that protects Israel today, Father. Lord, that reaches to the center, Father, and that feels they're the furthest away from you, God. Lord, to the person, Lord, who's laid up lame, Lord, in a hospital bed, Lord, we can speak your name, Lord, and bondages are broken, God. Lord, there's power in your name today, Lord. And I refuse, Lord, to believe, God, Lord, it is not real, Lord, that it's dead, Lord. But, Lord, there's power in your name today, Lord. Lord, if I'm the only one, Lord, if there's three of us today, God, if there's 14 of us, Lord, it's the congregation, Lord. Lord, there's power in your name today, Jesus. And, Lord, we lift that name up today, God, like a bloodstained banner, Lord. Over this region, God, over our lives, Lord, over our situations, Father. Lord, there's power in your name, Lord. There's power in your name. Lord. I'm here to challenge you today. If you need a touch from the Lord today, just speak his name. Just speak his name in your situation. I'm telling you, bondages have broken. Strongholds have no place in your situation today. Addictions have to fall in the name of Jesus today because there's power in his name. He's the Prince of Peace today. Thousands of angels are in worship today. It's just not you. It's just not me today. But there are millions of angels. There are millions of angels today telling who he is. They're saying he's holy. There's no other name given above Jesus today. Cancer's not bigger than Jesus today. Alcoholism is not bigger than the name of Jesus today. They have to fall. They have to fall. They have to fall. They don't get a say in the matter. They don't get a decision. They don't get an option. They have to fall in the name of Jesus. 
Come on, if you believe that, shout back at me if you believe that today. Come on, raise your voice like a voice of triumph today. Come on today, lift your voice in victory today. If there's power in the name of Jesus today. Scripture says when he's exalted, men are drawn unto him today. But it's just not the man that gets drawn to him. So we understand something when we say that, when we read that. People just don't congregate for a reason. But when men are drawn unto him, their imperfections are drawn to him. Their strongholds are drawn to him. Their imperfections are drawn to him. Their doubts are drawn to him. And their destiny is drawn to him. So can we do that right now with everybody's hands lifted high today? I don't care if it's going to make you uncomfortable, if it's going to make somebody else uncomfortable, just look at him and say, I'm sorry. But I got to give him what he's due today. I got to give him what he's due today. Father, we exalt you in this place today, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. It's never about us, Lord. It's never been about us, Lord. It's been about your sacrifice, Lord. Praise God. Father, you're El Elyon today. You're the most high God. There is no God above you. At your name, Islam bows. At your name, terrorist-ism goes your name sickness must bow at your name circumstances must turn around at the name of Jesus God we're grateful today that we serve a God that is above every God every situation you are in total control of our lives right now you are in total control of this universe. God, we stand and we give you our praise. We give you glory. We give you honor today because you are an awesome God and you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on and give him the ovation of the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
and tied to there is no other. You are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Slap your neighbor a high five and tell him our God's an awesome God. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Today we're going to continue our message we started last week on uncaged Christianity. Amen. How many know that for too long we have been in a cage? our own fears, our own situations and circumstances of life, but Jesus came so that we could have life, and have it abundantly, amen, I don't know about you, but I just want the abundant life, if Jesus paid for it, bought it, it's mine, then I want it, amen, praise God. So today we're going to talk about that. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 19, starting in verse number 6. Ezekiel 19, starting in verse number 6. It says there, He roamed among the lions and became a young lion. He learned to catch prey. He devoured men. He knew their desolate places and laid waste their cities. The land in with its fullness was desolated by the noise of his roaring. Then the nation set against him for the province on every side and spread their net over him and he was trapped in their pit. They put him in a cage with chains and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him in nets that his voice should no longer be heard on the mountains of Israel. Have you ever visited a zoo? and seen animals that were meant to be roaming God's beautiful creation, locked up in a cage. They are fed and they have everything that they need. They have the food, they have the water, and somehow they become uh, lethargic and even appears as though satisfied with living in this cage even though they were meant to roam the jungle even though they were meant to be more I've heard it said that after these animals have been caged for a while that you can literally take the cage away or the boundary away and they will live with inside the confines of that what used to be the cage because in their mind in their mind they are still restrained they are still in and choose because of their mind tells them that this is as far as we can go this is as much as we can do. And Ezekiel here in chapter 19 describes Israel as a lion. He said at one time the roar paralyzed everything in the jungle. At one time Israel was great and mighty. But now the enemy has come, has put them in chains, put him in a cage and has now brought Israel into captivity and likens him to a caged lion. 
But we understand today that God has not created us to be in a cage. I want to talk to you about this morning kings in a cage. Kings in a cage because 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 tells us this. But you, say that's me. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. That talks about the priesthood, right? A holy nation that, and a, God's own special people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Amen. He is talking to us as kings and priests unto God and says to us, I have called you. And we talked about this Wednesday night. If you weren't here Wednesday, get on the internet, uh, get, download the, uh, the app there. You can find all the messages there. But God has anointed us just like he did Jesus in three areas. And he has anointed us to be king. He has anointed us to be prophet. And he has anointed us to be a priest. Amen. And in that same uh, area as what he anointed Jesus to do he has anointed you and I to do amen we are not a second rate nothing we aren't we don't have a, a a leftover anointing but the same anointing that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth to be a prophet a, pro, a priest and a king he has anointed you today as his believer to be that same operate in that same anointing as a prophet a priest and a king amen but if your mindset is I'm a wretched worm if your mindset is I'm just an old sinner then you will never operate in the anointing that God has anointed you with. Amen. You're in a cage. Your mindset has conformed you to say this is all that I can do. Amen. But I want to say, tell you today that we have, we have kings that are in cages. But we have been called out of darkness to be kings and priests before God. Amen. But for too long, we have been kings bound up in cages. We have accepted the mindset of our enemy that we are less than what God has created us to be. But I've come today to open the cage over your mind and tell you rise up and be the king that God has called you to be. Be the priest that God has called you to be. Be the prophet that God has called you to be. I, uh, Pastor, I just, I'm, what am I supposed to be king over? Be king over your home. Come on, men. Amen. Be priest over your house. Prophesy over your children and say you will be blessed. You will succeed. There isn't nothing you cannot do. You will be the head and not, come on. You got to stand up every once in a while. Don't cower down and get stuck up in a cage, but declare I am a king. I am of royalty. I am a priest. I will prophesy and declare the word of the Lord over my family, over my generation, over my workplace. I will be blessed in the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. So let me tell you just a couple of things that the enemy will cage us up in. First cage is the cage of feeling unqualified. We live our lives feeling that we are not qualified to do anything. We feel we don't measure up, that we can't do it. Somebody else is better at it than we are. We, you know, brother so-and-so can do it because he's more qualified. Sister can do it because she's got greater abilities. We think others can go to the next level. We don't have a problem thinking that someone else can receive from God. We don't have a problem others can do great things for the body of Christ. And we feel caged up with this lack of qualification. You feel like you want to do more, you should do more, 
you, but you don't have the qualifications to do it. The enemy will tell you you can't. The enemy will tell you you're not smart enough, you're not gifted enough, you're not talented enough, you don't have the ability to do it. What does unqualified mean? It means not enough skill. It means you don't fit. It means that you don't have enough talent. You don't have enough knowledge, right? It is the battle that is in your mind that your mind tells you you're in this cage of unqualified and because your mind has told you that you don't have the ability to do a thing. Yeah. Amen? But I've got news for you today. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, yeah. but they're mighty through God yeah. to the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. Amen? Now where is that stronghold at? It isn't out there in the world. It isn't out there somewhere. You know, people uh, you know, do a lot of different things, and I'm not against that. But let me tell you something. If you don't get your mind out of the cage, you're never going to bring down principalities and powers of darkness over a region. Amen. If you don't get strongholds off of your mind, you're never going to cast the devil out of somebody else. Come on. Amen. You're not going to be able to heal the sick and set the captive free. Where is that stronghold? Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let me ask you a question. Did, did, does it, your thought line up with Christ's thinking? Does your mind tell you, is, does Christ tell you you can't? Does Christ tell you anywhere in Scripture you're unqualified, you're unable, you're insufficient, there's a lack? I submit to you, no. He tells you I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Amen. In other words, he's telling us that we need to bring our thought life under subjection to the will, the mind, the knowledge of God and begin to think those things that are pure, those things that are holy, those things that are honest, those things that are virtue, those things that are of a good report. Think upon these things and when you filter them through that, you'll understand I'm not bound, I'm not underqualified, I am the righteousness of God and I can do all things through him who has strengthened me. You don't do things because you're qualified. You do things because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Qualified comes from the same family of words as quality. And the enemy will tell you that other people are of better quality than what you are. But it's time for you to come out of that cage. It's time for you to begin to do everything God has ordained for you to do, called you to do, anointed you to do. If you're ready to come out of that cage, give him praise here this morning. Will you do that? Nehemiah, let's interview him. Nehemiah, what makes you think you can rebuild walls? Amen? Nehemiah 1, that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came to me from Judah and asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there there is a great distress and reproach the walls of Jerusalem is also broken down and the gates are burned with fire so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days I fasted and prayed before God of heaven now watch this Nehemiah was unqualified to do any building. He had never built a dog house, let alone a house. He wasn't 
an architect. He was not a builder. He was a cupbearer. But the word of the Lord comes to him and puts a burden in his heart. You see, that's how God works. He'll put something in your heart that you feel like, I don't have the ability, I don't have the talent, and he said, that's the reason I gave it to you. So when it gets done, you won't be able to crow about it. It'll be me that has to get the glory for what is done. And a Nehemiah here, he had zero experience building he was not an architect, but yet God calls him to do this first task of building. It wasn't to build a house. It wasn't to remodel a room, but to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. The whole city was dependent upon him. You see, God specializes in using unqualified folks that look like they can't get it done. He, he stakes art that that it has no skill, no talent or ability. And he says, I'm going to use you to get my job done so I can get the glory in the end of this thing. Uh, let's look in scripture. He used a farmer by the name of Noah to build an ark. It wasn't that, that amazing that he built the ark. The amazing thing was it floated. <laughs> he, used, <laughs> he used a shepherd boy by the name of David to be his captain in his army to go about and destroy the work of the enemy. He used a murderer by the name of Paul and raised him up to write three quarters of the New Testament. God uses unqualified people. And when we step out of our ability, we step into a, his unlimited power. And I submit to you today, you've got to step out of your ability and step into his unlimited power. And his anointing will come upon your life to do what you thought you could not do. Oh, somebody praise him up in here today. If you'll let him, God will let you be able to accomplish things that are beyond your education, beyond your ability, beyond your power, so that he receives the glory in your life. But you see, the problem is there's too many people busy climbing the ladder of success only to find out they're climbing the wrong ladder. I don't want to just be busy. I want to be all, do all, and accomplish all that God has for my life. Amen. I want to accomplish what he has for my life. Tell somebody, come out of the cage of unqualified. The second one he uses is the cage of guilt. We get trapped in this place of guilt. One of the most effective cages that he uses against us is the cage of guilt. Guilt is so powerful because it highlights our failures and it, our weaknesses and causes us to focus on our unworthiness. The greatest vaccine for guilt is the grace of God. I said the greatest vaccine that you can get for guilt is the grace of God. Because you see the grace of God, uh, guilt always surrenders to grace. Amen. There is nothing greater than grace in your life. And whenever you get this grace of God in your life, guilt has to surrender to the grace of our God. Amen. There is something greater than your guilt. There is something greater than your past. There is something greater than your failure. And it is the grace of God. First John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Your mama may not forgive you. Your daddy may not forgive you. 
Your friends may not forgive you. The church may not even forgive you. But God is faithful and just to forgive you of all of your sins. Amen. Amen. It is the enemy's job to paralyze you by your past and cause you to be frozen by your failure. But I want to tell you today that God has come with his grace to set you free from your yesterday so that you can enjoy your today and fulfill your purpose in your tomorrow. Amen. Guilt overwhelms. Our bondage is not because Jesus has not forgiven us. Our bondage is because we have failed to forgive ourselves. But I want you to know today who I was is not who I am. What I did does not define me. I'm not an ex-anything. I'm not an ex-con. I'm not an ex-drug addict. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Glory to God. I'm not a re better refurbished old me. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. If there is anyone who had a right to be ashamed, it would be Saul or Paul. He was the chief antagonizer of the church. Amen. He was the oversaw the killing and the murdering of church leaders. He was there and held the coats of the ones who stoned Stephen to death. But can you imagine with me his conversion and now he is going to kingdom gatherings and Stephen's family is there. These he has put to death personally and sent for their, uh, uh, their murder. These family members are all at the kingdom gathering. And don't you know the enemy was there? To put guilt in his heart and say, look at here. This little boy don't have a daddy because of you. This one over here don't have a mama because you killed her. You put her, I'm talking real now. Paul went to these kingdom gatherings. Amen. And he had to face the people's families that he had put to death. The enemy, amen, put his past and would bring his past up and make him feel unworthy to even be a part of this gathering. But from a jail cell, Paul writes the Philippian church and he tells them, brethren, I haven't got it all together, but I have count myself to apprehend it all. But this one thing I have learned to do Forgetting those things which are behind. I press toward the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you today, you got to get a spirit of forget on you. And understand that the grace of God and the mercy of God is greater than your past. And don't allow the devil to hold you in a cage of guilt one more day. Hallelujah. Forget means to obliviate. It means to neglect. It means to ignore. Paul said, I'm going to neglect. I'm going to forget. I'm going to walk out of my past. I'm going to tell somebody today, you need to ignore your past. You need to obliviate it. You need to forget it. Amen. And allow God's grace to cover your life today. I'm going to neglect it. I'm going to walk away from it. I'm going to put it behind me and I'm going to believe God's grace to be great in my life. Amen. Amen. So many are still under the spell of guilt. We even come and worship, but our minds are still thinking about our past. But you can come out of it today. Forget your past. Listen to me. 
get this, forget your past, but don't forget what your past taught you. Forget your past, but don't forget what your past taught you. I'll not be caught back there again. I'll not go through that again. I'll not have that on my life again. God has redeemed me from it. He has set me free from it. I've learned my lesson, and I'm not going back there anymore. Amen. Can you imagine Peter? Every time he heard a rooster crow. <laughs> it reminded him of his rejection of Jesus. Every time a rooster opened his mouth and crowed, it, guilt came up in Peter's heart and said, maybe, just maybe, if I'd have stood with him. Maybe if I'd have been a witness for him, just maybe. Now we know that wouldn't have happened, but don't you know the enemy would have used it against him? Maybe I could have done something different. But every time that that rooster crowed, it reminded Peter of his past failures. Someone here today is still hearing the roosters crow in your life. They are here and they are going to bring up the guilt. They're wanting to bring up the shame. They're wanting to bring up your past. But I come to tell somebody today, it's time to kill the chicken. It's time to have chicken for lunch. Come on, somebody. It's time to take the head off and say, God is greater than my past. He has redeemed me from my failure, and he has set my feet upon a solid and a firm foundation. He's planted me here on this rock. I'm, I, I am blessed coming in. I am blessed going out. And there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Oh, bless him today. Hallelujah, aren't you glad you're free from guilt? 